everyone. In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about convergence of Taylor series. When can a Taylor series for a function be expected to converge to the function that generates it? Okay, that's something we want to consider. The finite ordered Taylor polynomials that approximate the Taylor series provide an estimate for the generating function. Okay, so we talked about Taylor series before and uh, how we can find a Taylor series for a function. Now, we're just talking about the convergence. When does that function actually equal the Taylor series and vice versa? So we need a way to control the possible errors that can be encountered when we're approximating a function with a Taylor series or a Taylor polynomial. And so we're gonna look at a formula and then um, a remainder. So the Taylor's formula says the following. If your function f has derivatives of all orders, so basically if you can keep taking derivatives and in some open interval containing a, where if you remember a was the center, then for each positive integer n and for each x in that interval, the following is true. Notice what this is saying. You have a function f of x and it's equal to this Taylor series but then notice over here, it ends, okay? It's not infinite. We actually stop somewhere. And so recall how the format of the Taylor series worked. It was the first term was from our regular function evaluated at our center A. And the next term had our first derivative evaluated at A. And then the third term, the second derivative, and so on and so on, okay? Now what's happening in the back here, this last term is actually what we call the remainder or error, okay? And so this remainder or error of order n is based on, if you notice the notation, the next term, okay? So if we're stopping at n, then the remainder or error in this approximation here is um, this value within, within this range, okay? So where we have our nth plus one derivative over n plus one factorial, and then our x minus our center a to the n plus one power. Now, if that remainder approaches zero as n approaches infinity, then what we get to say is that the Taylor series generated by that function at that value of a actually converges, converges to that function. And then we have the following result. Our function f of x equals this series. So it's no longer um, like strictly an approximation. We can just go ahead and say, all right, this function equals this series. So we won't get into using all of the theorems and formulas for pr um, proofs, but I just want to show you here some common Taylor series that you're going to be able to use. So these are ones that are good to reference uh, because you can use the Taylor's formula and then the remainder idea to verify these. So we have, for example, I'll just pick a couple. 1 over 1 minus x is equal to this series over here. It's equal to um, the summation from 0 to infinity of x over n. Uh, pick another one down here. We can say that cosine x is equal to this series and so on. So these are really good ones to reference and have handy when you're working on these types of problems. So let's look at just a couple of examples. We are going to use known series to find the Taylor series at x equals zero of the function e to the negative 16x. So we start with our known series. From the previous slide, we know e to the x is equal to this series. 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial and so on, which is this series over here from 0 to infinity of x over n, I'm sorry, x to the n over n factorial. So basically what we're going to do is since we know this formula, we can adjust it for the function we are working with. So for the function e to the negative 16x, just look at your formula here and you're going to replace x with negative 16x. So everywhere we had an x, we put negative 16x, and then we just summarize it with our summation notation. 
And so we have that e to the negative 16x is equal to the series where we have negative 16x to the n power over n factorial. Okay, let's look at one more. So again, using our known series, let's find the Taylor series at x is 0 for the function 1 over 2 minus x. So if you look at the list of known series that we had, this one most closely relates to the series 1 over 1 minus x, which was written um, as our series x to the m power as n goes to infinity. So basically what you have to do on this one, it's not as straightforward as the last example, you have, we just have to manipulate a little bit um, the way our function looks. So we have 1 over 2 minus x. Let's go ahead and factor out the 2. So if we factor out the 2, we have um, a 1 minus 1 half x. And then we can even go a little further and factor out this entire 1 half. And so now if you match up what we have going on here with our known series, we do have a 1 minus something. And so the x in our known series is going to get replaced with the 1 half x from what we're working with. Okay, so here's what we have. The 1 half that we factored out is all the way in the front. And then in our formula here for our series, where we had an x, we replaced it with 1 half x. Okay, let's go a little bit further and simplify this one. So we can go ahead and say 1 half x to the n power is the same thing as 1 half to the n times x to the n power. And then notice you have an, a 1 half out front still. Because these are the same base of 1 half, we can go ahead and use rules of exponents and say that this is 1 half to the n plus 1 power. And so that's our series. And we can expand it a little bit. And this is 1 half plus 1 fourth x, and so on. Okay, so that's it.